Hello and welcome to the final main video in my I Now for Beginners 2022 series. Now, so far we have done the entire setup from a bag of bits to installing everything into this model here. This is the Mars plane and this one is for the maiden flight. Now, I'm going to talk about typically what I would do in a maiden, covered it briefly in the last video, but this one is showing you how the first ever flight of this model went. Unfortunately, we're flying it on a day that is 10 to 15 mile an hour winds, pretty strong, but this was the only chance we had to do this maiden flight and get the filming done before about September. So a massive thank you to one of my flying buddies, Adam, who is wearing the hat cam and acting as my spotter for this maiden as well. Now, there's a number of things I'd recommend before you get to the field that you do, because it can be an unnerving time and you can minimise the chance of something going wrong by making some smart choices. I would pick a day when the weather is calmer. I'm not going to be able to go through my entire process here just because it's so windy. But I would confirm before you go to the field that everything is set up the way you want it. Check the modes and the setup in iNav is good as per the series and check that you can get a GPS lock and arm it before you leave home. It's always heartbreaking to get all the way to the field and then find that something is wrong and you haven't got your laptop with you. Check the things like the failsafe icon, the little parachute at the top of iNav appears when you turn off the radio so that if something horrible happens with the receiver, the model will try and come back to you. And at the field, take your time. Having a buddy there can be a great help with the nerves. And again, thank you to Adam for being there for me on this day. It was not ideal, but I'll show you how it all goes in a minute. Quick inspection before you fly of the connections. Make sure things like the prop nut are tight or the servo plugs are secure is a good idea. And perform a CG check and a high five check before you fly to make sure that it's balancing on the CG marks and all the control surfaces are still moving in the right way. Don't forget to familiarize yourself with where the return to home switch is if you have it set up and also the switch for manual. I always have manual ready for a maiden flight in case I have accidentally done something wrong. Now I'm going to use auto launch here. Auto launch is one of my favorite things about iNav. It can rescue a bad throw or an untrimmed model. And this model will hopefully have enough static thrust to easily get into the air. This is weighing about 1.5 kilograms with the battery that I have in here, but it is a relatively large wingspan. So let's go and see if I can throw it and if it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is wait for the GPS lock. The beeper will give a little trilling noise to let me know that that's the case. Quick check in the DJI goggles and I can see that's the way it is. And then it's a case of as soon as I arm it, it goes into auto launch. I increase the throttle to 100%. I have it set so the props start spinning and then I throw it and away it goes. Always a massive relief to see it flying into the sky. Now, as soon as I touch the sticks, it falls back into horizon mode, which is a relatively safe mode. And I fly around a little bit in horizon and just see whether or not it's rising or falling in level flight. Now, it's tricky in a high wind like this to get this spot on, but I would just keep your eye on the altitude and just get an idea. This plane, I kind of over egged the board offset in this, but that's fine. We can fix it in a moment. So I enabled auto trim and tried to just fly straight and level and fly around and let auto trim adjust that board offset down. Once that's done, then I disabled auto trim and then dropped back into manual mode to check that the servos were trimmed, which they are, which is fantastic. And that is in a really good place. Now, once we're in manual mode, I can also check the roll and pitch rates in manual to check how everything feels. Now, with the throws that I have in this, I've got about 15% throws on the ailerons and about 10 millimeter throws on the elevator and rudder on the V-tail. I'm getting nice rolls. They could definitely bump that up a little bit more if you wanted a more acrobatic version, but lots of pitch authority from that 10 millimeter movement of the elevator element of the V-tail. So that all feels good. Now, if I was flying on a calm day, the last couple of things that I'd do after I'd got to this part, I'd enable acro and then enable auto-tune and go through the auto-tune process, uh, moving the stick to from middle position to the left and right for the roll, doing that 20 or 30 times, and then doing the same thing for pitch, and then going back and doing it all again. 
and keep doing it until it responds like it's flying in manual mode. Once it does, carry on for another little while just to save the settings, and then I would typically go back into manual and confirm that acro and manual have a similar feel, and then I'd bring it into land. And unfortunately, those last couple of steps I haven't had an opportunity to do with this particular flight, but I will do that next time I fly. But I was really keen to show you how well iNav can fly a plane like this. Just doing a little bit of testing on things like the speed envelope of this plane, how stable it is. Uh, it's definitely not a floater, but it is incredibly stable, even in this windy condition. So once you've completed the full maiden process, including the auto-tune, I would go back into iNav and turn off that auto-tune mode from the modes tab and replace it with something I'm more likely to use, something like a GPS loiter or something else. And I'd also potentially remove acro. I don't fly a lot in acro. I tend to use either Horizon, where I have full support for everything, or I fly in manual, depending on what I'm doing. And once you've done all this, I would save the settings in iNav using a diffall, just keep them somewhere safe. So if you need to refer to them, they're there. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that were interested to actually see this thing get into the air. This was far from the perfect day for a maiden, but I bit the bullet because I wanted you to see it before, well, middle, late September, and to prove that it's all working. Unfortunately, it did mean that it took a little bit of a tumble on the landing, not too much damage on this. The nose cone was split. I used the clear Gorilla Glue. I'm going to use something like Yoohoo Pour to re fix it back in. And one of the balsa supports and one of the wing roots had come slightly loose as well. Apart from that and the fact that unfortunately I snapped part of a prop in the tumble, well, I've got a couple of those on order as well. But that's my own fault because I kind of knew before this flight that I was chancing my arm. But the rest of the plane, despite tumbling, is absolutely perfect. So join me in a future video where I'll do a full review of everything about this plane and how I've got it set up. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.